Alright, so we have arrived at the ever contentious subject of compression. I felt it would be a good idea to tackle this since it's something that everyone who starts producing music should understand. The problem can be that the results of compression are not as musically obvious as something like a reverb or distortion, so unless you know what's actually happening to the sound, it can be a little confusing and lead to some incorrect assumptions about the use and misuse of compressors. Speaking of which, you probably read about the loudness war, articles of which are often accompanied by a waveform of a song looking something like this. The aim is to convince you that the overuse of compression damages the production quality of music. While this can be true, I don't like the fact that this kind of broad statement may dissuade people from using compression when it's actually appropriate. A compressor is merely a musical tool, much like reverb or distortion. So when you understand how the tool works and have a firm idea of what you want to achieve, then you can decide if and how to use it. When an audio signal is put through a compressor, its volume is reduced. What makes a compressor special though, is the threshold and ratio controls, which allow you to set where the compression takes place and how much the volume is reduced by. So if the threshold is set to minus 12 decibels, then only the parts of the signal that are louder than minus 12 are compressed. If the ratio is set at 2 to 1, then the volume will be reduced to half of the original volume. So this peak, which reached from minus 12 up to 0 decibels, has now been compressed to 6 decibels high. At a ratio of 4 to 1, the volume will be reduced to 25% of the original volume, compressing the peak to just 3 decibels high. And that's all there is to it, really. Whether you're compressing a single sound or an entire song, all you're doing is reducing the volume's dynamic range. Some of you may be thinking, but compressors make things louder. Actually, they don't, but they are almost always paired with another device that's used to increase the output volume coming from the actual compressor. In Renoise, this is the makeup slider at the bottom. Since the compression creates extra headroom, using a volume gainer allows you to increase the overall volume of the sound. So in this example, we can make the audio 9 decibels louder, and now you can see the effects of compressing the audio by comparing it to the original waveform. Some compressors are more complex, offering extra controls. The most common of which are attack and release, which adjust the responsiveness of the device. The attack value simply delays when the compression activates after the volume rises above the threshold, while the release value is how long the compression stays active after the volume falls below the threshold. You can see that in action in this example, where the minus 12 dB threshold is breached by the first peak faster than the 5 millisecond attack time, and so it does not activate the compressor. The second peak is longer, activating the compression after 5 milliseconds. The third peak occurs within the 10 millisecond release time, and so is instantly compressed and there will be another release window once it falls below the threshold. In addition to the regular compressor, Renoise also features a bus compressor, which uses different algorithms to handle short peaks and constant signals. It also has an additional knee parameter, 
which you can use to soften or sharpen the curve around the threshold point, adapting the compression ratio to the volume level. I'll be honest, I haven't actually used the bus compressor much, but it does sound quite different compared to the regular compressor, and apparently it's good for mastering. So it will certainly be worth taking the time to experiment with, and learn how to use effectively. Compression provides you with control over how much a sound will spike in volume. A good example of how useful this can be is in reducing the dynamics of the human voice. When played back alongside other audio sources, as is common in radio, TV, movies and games, it is essential that the dialogue sit properly in the mix and remain understandable at all times. You can see how this may also apply to the mix of a song, where with careful use of compression, an acoustic instrument, such as vocals, can soar without the usual increase in volume, smothering the other instruments. Compression is also commonly used in mastering music, tightening up the final audio. Handling this yourself in Renoise creates a rather unique position, where it's possible to control every single aspect of the musical process, from composition all the way through to the final mastering. This obviously disrupts the traditional dynamic of separate mixing and mastering processes, because you can go back and adjust anything at any time to make the various stages complement each other, thus making smarter use of compression and improving the production quality of your music.